how to use stable video diffusion on your computer. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Stability AI has released two new models for image to video rendering. And today I'm going to show you a workflow on how you can run it on your computer very easily. Now I'm not going to play around here. If you don't have ComfyUI, you need to install it today because it is the future of AI image and video rendering. Also shout out to Enigmatic E. He has built that workflow. So I will link his video below the channel. And then I also host the workflow on my Google Drive just to make sure that you can always download it. Also, let me know in the comments what your favorite way is to render AI videos. So first have a quick look see at the stability AI announcement here. They have a video here where they show very nice examples. This has an image input and then animates these images into these movie scenes. Below that, they talk a little bit about their model plans and what they do with it. Here they say our video model can be easily adapted to various downstream tasks, including multi view synthesis from a single image with fine tuning on multi view data sets. We are planning a variety of models that build on and extend this base similar to the ecosystem that has built around stable diffusion. So they have big plans for that. And you can see also here some pretty amazing examples of multi view synthesis. If you scroll a little bit lower, you can sign up here for the waiting list. But why wait if you can use it today? If you don't want to run ComfyUI at all because you're a bit of a bonehead, well, you can also go over to replicate.com and there you can use a demo of it where you can upload an image here and then simply click run down here and this will then create the video for you. I would suggest that actually trying it out makes a lot more sense. So what we need for that is to download the two different models. You go to the Hugging Face page. I will link that below. Here we have two different files. You either need one of them or if you want to have both of them. One is called SVD, the other one SVD Image Decoder. Now they do actually the same thing, but one of the models is for 14 frames and the other model is for 25 frames. It's the one with the longer name. And now we're already heading over to ComfyUI. Now here, one thing is very important. First of all, you need to install the ComfyUI Manager extension. I will link that below the video. To install the ComfyUI Manager, you simply go to the GitHub page and copy the web address. And then you go into the ComfyUI folder and there into the custom notes folder, you click up here and type CMD. And then when you have the command window open, you type git clone and put the web address also hit enter. This is going to download everything for you. And then you're going to restart ComfyUI. Now, when you do have the manager, it's over here where you have your queue window with all of these buttons down here, it says manager. You need to click on that and then you need to click on update all because you need to have an updated version of ComfyUI so that this can run. It's not running on an older version of ComfyUI. After the update has run through, click here on load and load the workflow. This is a JSON file. Once you've loaded the workflow, you're probably going to see a bunch of red boxes. So you want to go back to the ComfyUI manager and click on install missing custom nodes. And in there, you will see a list of things you're supposed to install. Now, this is an overview of all the extensions. So this is not exactly what you are seeing. I'm showing this for demo reasons. So on the right side, you have your install button. Click on that and wait for the install to finish. Down here, it will tell you inside of the window when this has finished. Do that for every missing node pack. After all of the downloads and installs have finished, you need to close the ComfyUI command window and start ComfyUI again so the rest of the install can run through. After that, all of these boxes should look like this and be gray. Now let's look at how this actually works. So here on the first node, we have our checkpoint loader. You want to click on that and then use up here the filter to type SVD. And there you see the two models. You can use either of them. Down here you have the image loader. Click on choose file to upload to choose the file you want to have. However, this needs to be in a resolution of 576 by 1024 or the other way around, but it has to be this specific resolution. 
You can also see the resolution over here. Of course, if you change the resolution around, you also need to change it around in here. Below that, you have the number of video frames. Like I said, it's either 14 or 25. And then you have a motion bucket. You have the frames per second and the augmentation level. Now what the motion bucket does is it defines how quick the motion is happening inside of your video. The frames per second you should not touch, just leave it at six. And then the augmentation level basically defines how augmented or how animated the background and the details in the image is. So the higher you set that, the more stuff is happening inside of your video. So you need to play around with these two values here. This node you can ignore down here for the minimum CFG value. And then next to it, we have our K sampler here. Now I found that it's also useful to play around with the CFG scale to see what kind of results you get from that. A low value seems to be a pretty good idea, like for example, three or four. You can try to go higher. You can try to also use values like 3.5, things like that. The rest of the workflow is running automatically and then just putting out the video over here. To save it, you simply right click and and then here you can save preview. And of course, to render the video over here, you have the Q prompt button. You need to click on that to start the rendering process. As you can see at the moment, there is no text input. There is no other adjustments. You can do no masking. So this is simply an image input and then the AI figures the movement out for you. I also found at the moment that it's better to use simpler images with not too complex actions. So for example, a rocket starting or a train moving along the tracks is simple enough and doesn't have too much complex movement in there. Personally, I'm super excited about this because it's similar to what Runway can do with an image to video rendering. Of course, Runway now has additional things you can do like entering a prompt, but this is a good starting point. It is rendering fast and more importantly, it's running on your local system. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you soon, my friends. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.